I'm just boring. A lot of people make mistakes on this problem right here. Trust me. You got the zero. You do bring down the two. But well, wait a second. Does seven go into two? No. No. If ever, listen, if ever you bring down a number and it still won't <coughs> divide into it, you have to put a zero up here. You have to do that. If you just leave that blank and you bring down the eight and then you put a number up there, you're going to be off by a whole bunch. That zero says, I tried to divide it. It just, it wouldn't divide. There, it wasn't large enough for me to divide. So we put a zero there saying it cannot go into that any amount of times. Are you with me? Nod your head if you're with me on this. You guys in the back over there? Okay. So we, we had the zero. We obviously had to bring down the two. But seven didn't go into two. That's why I put the zero above that two. Now we can bring down the eight. Every time you bring down a number, you have to write a number up top. Every time you bring down a number, you have to write a number up top. Clear? Okay, so now we have the 28. How many times does zero, I'm sorry, seven go into that 28? Four. Then we can write our four, and we get 28. When we subtract, we get zero, saying it went it evenly. But my main point here is that a lot of people, if they don't know exactly what they're doing, you know what answer they'd give me instead of 304? 34. 34. A lot, I get that all the time, all the time. Also, can you check your work in division? Can you check it? Yeah. How? Yeah, that's right. So if I multiply these two numbers, it better give me 2,128. And it will. it will. So that's one way you can check it really easily. All right, 4 into 939. So we're going through the process and we go, oh, right, we know how to do this. 4 goes into 9 two times. I'm going to write the 2. I multiply the 4 times the 2, I get an 8. Next thing we said to do is we're going to subtract that so we get the 1. We bring down the 3. We continue our algorithm. 4 goes in 13. How many times? <coughs> 3. We get 12. We subtract. That gives us a 1. We've got to bring down that 9. Four. How many times does 4 go into 19 without going over? 4. We multiply again, we get 16, and we subtract, but this time we don't get 0, we get 3. Did it go in evenly? No. no. Whenever you get something right down here, this thing's called the remainder. The remainder says that we went in a certain number of times, but it didn't go in evenly, and this is the extra what's remaining from what we, after we divide it. So this right here is our remainder. And here's what we're going to do with remainders for right now. In the future, when we get to decimals and when we get to fractions, I'll show you how to do a couple other things. But for right now, all we have to do is say, okay, 234 was our quotient with a remainder of 3. That's all you got to do now. No extra work at this point. You still with me? <coughs> okay, so the decimal thing and the fraction thing that will come in later time. Okay, I'd like you to try a couple on your own, then we'll move on to a little bit of estimation, and we'll wrap up our section here real quick. So 5 into 3,287, let's do that one, and let's do 81,605. divided by 9. Remember, I'll be walking around. If you need help on this, this division, you really just maybe you forgot how to do it or it never really made sense to you, let me know and I'll try to help you right now, okay? Take some time to do those problems.
Did I already pass the roll out? Let's get back to our math up here. We're doing 3,287 divided by 5. The first thing we're checking is, does 5 go into 3? Now, now clearly it doesn't, so we consider the next two digits. 5 goes into 32, how many times? Six. Five. Six. So we're doing our 6. We multiply and we get 30. When we subtract, we're going to get the 2. And we follow the process. We're going to bring down that 8. We'll divide again. What are we going to get now? Five. All right. The multiplication is going to give us a 25, we'll subtract, we'll get 3, we'll bring down that 7. 7. 35. Cool, so 7 gives us 35, we subtract, we get 2. So we're going to do anything special with that 2, we're just going to write R2 right next to it, a remainder of 2. Make sure you do that though, don't, don't just leave me hanging because one thing I need to know is that if you know what this little 2 stands for, okay, that it is a remainder. So don't just leave this problem the way it is on your homework or your test. Go up to the top, just give me this right there, and I'll be happy. How many people got exactly that on the paper? Good deal, fantastic. Next one. Nine doesn't go into eight, but it does go into 81. Nine. We multiply, we get the 81. When we subtract, we get zero. We bring down the six, and we go, oh, this was the case that we just talked about. So since nine doesn't go into six, it's less than that. Zero. Yeah, we're going to put that zero up top. Do you have the zero up top? Yes. Not sure if you do. Good. All right. Very good. Yeah. We have to put that zero there. If you bring down a number, you have to write something on the top. <coughs> Even if it's a zero, that's okay. You have to write something. So we're going to bring down another number. Nine goes into 60. Six. When we subtract, we're going to get the six. We'll bring down our five. Yes. Yep, seven times. We'll multiply and get our 63. And coincidentally, we get a remainder of two again. Now, you have to feel all right with this division thing. You okay with long division? Good, all right. Very good. We're not going to go over any specific problems, but remember, you can estimate with division as well. So if someone asked you, <coughs> this problem and they wanted an exact answer, you can actually tr get most of the way through it by estimating. For, for instance, if, if you set this up, I mean 670, that's a big number to try to divide. It's not going to go into 3. It's not going to go into 33. It's not going to go into 332. And it's going to go into 3,328. But I'm not too good. I don't know about you. I'm not too good at multiples of 678. But I am pretty good at multiples of 700. Aren't you? Do you see what I'm saying? So round it to 700 for now and estimate. Go, okay. If I don't know how many times 678 goes into 3,300 or whatever, maybe I know how much 700 goes in. So we do 700. 1,400, 2,100, 2,800, 3,400 is too big. Now, it may very well be that, but this gives you an idea that it's either 4 or 5 up top without doing a whole lot of math work out, outside of your head. Are you with me on this? So you can estimate there. Let me show you what would happen. If we put a 4 over here, so I use 700 as my estimate, I'm going to get my 32. We're multiplying. We're going to 28, 29, 30, 31. I'm going to get 24, 25, 26, 27. Did they do it right? Someone else get the same thing? I hope I did. Did you? 
So we have that right. 616 is less than 678. Now let's say you had done this and you had gotten a number big, bigger than 678. Right there, that would tell you that what you have up top is not big enough. You raise it by one and then you redo the math. But the estimate will save you a lot of time rather than trying to really think of this stuff. Hope you will understand what I just talked about. You okay? Still feeling kind of... Okay, let's see how we can apply this to real life. You know, if you're a, a company, every single day you maybe you make something. I think I, in my example is we're going to make hamburgers. Do you like hamburgers? I love hamburgers. They're so good. <clears throat> Love me some hamburgers. Let's say you're making hamburgers. You're a hamburger business. Are you going to make enough patties to fill boxes that it's going to be exactly the same, exactly fill a box and be done that day? Well, maybe not. Maybe you know you can make like 358 patties a day. That's your job. You make 358 patties a day. It's perfect. Your machine makes that every time. But you only box patties in boxes of 12. So these are like those large patties that you get, those extra big ones. So if you box or bag patties in packages of 12 and you make 358 patties a day, you might want to know how many patties you're going to have extra so that the next day you can start on that amount again. So you can, you know how much profit you're going to make, you know how much inventory you're sending out and how much revenue you're getting back. Are you with me on this? So let's go ahead and let's do the example. You make 358 hamburgers a day. You package them in bags of 12. What I want to know is this. I want you to do this on your own. I want to find out how many bags of hamburgers you can make every day and how many you have left over to start with the next day. We're just going to freeze them, we'll put them in the bags tomorrow and finish off a bag and start, start fresh. Okay with that? So I want to know how many bags of hamburgers you can make in a day and how many are left over. Just do this on your own. If you know it already, don't say it out loud, we'll let everyone work on it. 